Fellas, AC here, welcome to another review. And today, it's a contemporary release. It was released last year, 2022. It is Armani Code Absolute. Now, Armani Code has been in circulation for a long, long time. It's been around since 2004, I believe. And it's one of those fragrances that I have always sort of ignored because it's a fragrance which has the kind of tonka I did not like. So I sort of ignored uh, all variations of code, uh, apart from Eau de Cologne or whatever it's called, uh, the summery vibe one. That was really nice. So this one here, it really impressed me. I don't know why I thought I should give it a try. And I'm giving it two sprays. It's not needed really. Wow, this is amazing fragrance. I mean, I really am impressed with this fragrance. I've got to dry down as well, just to take you through the whole journey. So. Let's start. It came out in 2022 and the perfumer is Antoine Maison Dieu. And this fragrance, when you spray, it's just delightful. It starts with this aldehyde bergamot, very bright and sunny. And it's mixed with many things. There's a green sage and there's a smell of petit grain. The note breakdown says it should have bergamot leaf, but it smells like petit grain. So petit grain, Sage. This is a new one. This sage reminds me of Hermes H24 Sage. Synthetic green. Very strong. But it's very strong and vegetal. But it's covered with a, a sort of a aldehydic bergamot. Very sunny, bright bergamot. Smell of petit grain. And sweet and sour, savory kind of an ambery note. Which I've smelled before in Baccarat Rouge. This is, this is what surprised me. It's like Makrat Rouge um, Amber Note. Just strip off the Amber Note. Uh, sweet and sour, bubbly, fizzy, slightly spicy. All mixed together. Fantastic opening. Love this opening. This Fanta-like fizzy sort of orangey note or ambery orange note is adding amazing oodles and oodles of interesting facet to this fragrance. I love it. Now, when the fragrance dries down, in about 10 minutes, the fragrance brings in another note, which is quite familiar. It is Oris and I or Iris, which is quite chewy, quite got a bit of layer to it, got a bit of substance to it, and it's soapy in nature. So it mixes with that green vegetable sage, the ambery note I talked about, the fizzy pop smell, and a little hint of petty grain and tonka. And this tonka is the reference to the original Armani code. And somehow here it's more interesting, more fun. So I've already referenced H24. And then comes the iris, soapy iris with a lot of chewiness that you get in Prada Long Intense. This is discontinued, but this is a spectacular fragrance. I've reviewed this one. <coughs> so do check it out. And that soapy iris turns a little bit more uh, sort of um, stylish. This is a stylish fragrance. Somehow this iris brings in that style, the element of style, rather than going down the route of a fougere. It's again, very contemporary, um, stylish oris or iris mixed with all that fougere element and the amber. So many things put together, it creates a, a fabulous contrasting affair. And the dry down, reduces the sweetness, keeps the soapy iris, keeps the substance, the chewy character. It's not resinous but chewy, there's a lot of dense matter here and adds a little hint of ambroxan, the kind of ambroxan you smell in Elixir, Sauvage Elixir. So I've recalled many fragrances here and this fragrance basically cobbles together all these notes from different fragrances. If you've smelled them all, you'll smell them here and creates a unique sort of an experience. So, past the scent, very interesting, very unique, yet very familiar. And most importantly, stylish, very stylish. I, I really enjoy this fragrance. So, upsides and downsides. Number one upside, the performance. This fragrance has special, spectacular performance. It has great projection, yeah? I put two, excuse me, I put two on my shirt, sorry, on my uh, winter coat and went out. And this thing was absolutely gunning out even after one hour. And it's, there's unquestionably, the performance is the main thing in this fragrance. 
it leaves a, a fabulous trail. I should have put two and longevity is about 10 to 12 hours <coughs> plus, you know, depends on how many sprays you go for. So that's the, the biggest positive. Number two positive is the, the fragrance is familiar, yet it creates a very special sort of uh, environment you know, for you to enjoy. It's like a very showy kind of environment. You put this on, you want to go out. You want people to smell you. Excuse me, it's so strong. Next, uh, downsides. Downsides would be, it's so familiar. So many things, so many facets of this fragrance is familiar. So that's downside. And number two would be wearability. Where do you wear this? It's absolutely nuclear strength. If you go two or three sprays, you'll have difficulty breathing like I am having. So where do you wear this? You will have to really ask yourself, where do you wear this fragrance? So, <clears throat> those are the upsides and downsides. Now, occasions, where do you wear this fragrance? That's a big question I've been asking. You cannot wear this to work. It will absolutely stink up the whole place. And it's very showy, very um, sort of a show-offy fragrance. Exactly the fragrance you shouldn't be wearing to work if you are a white collar worker. If you are not into white collar, if you're into different industries, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> like um, show business, for example, like um, other industries where you don't need to be in an office environment, enclosed space, you could probably wear this. But if you're into white collar, don't wear this fragrance to work. So where do you wear it? You wear it to clubbing. You wear it to party, you wear it to social occasions where you want to show off your uh, fragrance. Mm. This is so strong, it is becoming more and more difficult for me to speak. I shouldn't have sprayed too. So, <clears throat> compliment factor, massive, massive compliment factor. This is A, it smells great. The Tonka is so attractive to females. This is really stylish and show offy. So massive compliment factor. Seasons, winter. All the notes I mentioned, the way it's been sort of cobbled together, I would say cool or cold weather. So three seasons, you know, early spring, winter, late autumn. Almost six months a year, you could wear this. Uh, value for money. This fragrance at the moment in the market is for about 100, 110. I wouldn't spend 110 for an Armani. I'm sorry, that's Dior Chanel bracket. I'd probably happily pay 70 pounds for this. So a little bit overpriced at the moment, but if you wait around, it'll come down like all Armani's do. So value for money is medium to low. Um, what other aspects should I have covered? I think I've covered all aspects. Um, this fragrance has reminded me of at least four different fragrances. MS H24, Original Code, Prada L'Homme Intense, a little bit of Baccarat Rouge, so a little bit of Sauvage Elixir. In spite of that, it smells brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I really enjoy it every time I spray it from the beginning to the very end. It's a, it's a very, very enjoyable fragrance. So how many marks will I give it? I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. This is one of the best, one of the better releases, 20, <coughs> excuse me, and better releases of 2022. Eight out of 10. I hope you enjoy the review, fellas. Take care, bye-bye.